Dogs have lawyers, but they're not very good when they have lawyers. Um, I think that's the moral we can all take away from that. All right, um, I know a little bit about a lot of things, so I need to learn more. Um, so I write stuff on my hand, as you can see. Um, what's something you want to know more about? Bulldozers. I heard potpourri, because who knows what that is? <laughs> it smells funny. Um, but you know who knows everything about potpourri? Rob. Um, and to make things a little bit easier for Rob, uh, Adam is going to be playing his arms. So whenever you guys are ready, uh, you have a show on potpourri, you are that most surprise. Hello everybody and welcome to Everything Smelly. Tonight we have the world's foremost expert on potpourri, Jim Socks. Jim, it's good to see you here tonight. <laughs> oh, it's great to be here tonight. Now, tell us exactly how did you become interested in the fascinating field of potpourri? Well, when I was out in the bush, I, I discovered this amazing scent, and I couldn't place it. And then I, I just kept going and going, and finally, this, this room, it hopped by, and that's when I smelled potpourri in its pouch. And oh, that was amazing. I was taking all the potpourri from the room's pouch, and I was so proud. I became a potpourri expert. That was, that was the kangaroo upset that you were stealing all of her uh, potpourri. The kangaroo really, it hurt me. It hurt me a lot. It, it didn't like that I was trying to take his potpourri. I would smack me around. It's very frightening. Nice. See, look at my eye. See the little red mark? The roo did that to me. Wow. That must have been one dangerous roo. Twas. <laughs> two two rooms, actually. <laughs> wow. That was double the potpourri, yes? Double the potpourri. Double all the damage to my eyes. <laughs> That's excellent. Now, do you find that, put, that uh, a kangaroo's pouch is the best place to find potpourri? No! I found many better places. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> all right, do you have a uh, patented potpourri uh, locating technique? I do. I do. I developed it actually when I was out of the bush. I was in Sydney. I was at the Opera House and I found a caterpillar. And it was an amazing caterpillar. <laughs> Successful pianist. Uh, you. Wow. Yes. Yes, it was a piano playing caterpillar. That's a very talented caterpillar. And it also was very good at tracking puppery. That's incredible. I've never heard of a puppery tracking caterpillar before. Neither had I. That's amazing! Now, do you have to feed it something special to make it track the potpourri? Why, yes! In fact, bears! <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about going to Australia until the caterpillar eating bears. Bear eating caterpillars. Um, never heard of those before. Nature. Um, <laughs> Alright, let's get everybody up on the bed. Because uh, um, I've been in some weird situations. This is my first day of school today. I got beat up. Um, but that was the, the least awkward thing that happened to me today. What is something that's uh, awkward that happened to you recently? Explosive diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have anything? <laughs> A divorce. <laughs> These are the world's worst things to say after you've just been divorced. Your life was great. I don't have kids. You take kids. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, mom. It just wouldn't have worked out between us. Oh. I'm sorry, dad. It just wouldn't work out. If I get one more, I'll have a whole hand of divorces. <laughs> I'm sorry, your sister's just a much better kisser than you. Oh. I'm just gross, so I'm tired of us. And, uh, I hate you. <laughs> I'm sorry, my sister is just a better kisser than you. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna have some nightmares. Um, what's uh, what, uh, somebody right around there? What's your job? 
What do you do for a living? Server. A server. So uh, these are the world's worst servers. What do you mean? I just washed my hands yesterday. <laughs> That's just one little hair in there. No big deal. <laughs> Are you gonna eat that? <laughs> just take it and shut up. Mind if I have that margarita? <laughs> you know, 100% is the ordinary in this town. <laughs> oh, uh, what's, what's a health care? <laughs> All right. Um, I uh, I like going places, but there are some places I will never go back. Um, where somewhere you will never go back besides uh, Casa Bonita, because we get that all the time, <laughs> and any state adjacent to Colorado. Waterworld. Vatavet. Waterworld. <laughs> Water world with 25% less yellow water. <laughs> water world with 25% less vomit. Water world with 25% less back injuries. Water world now with real water. Water world now with 25% less kids. Sorry about that ride. <laughs> Alright, we'll end there. We can see. Just sit down after the kids do. Uh, Alright, um, actually, I'm gonna need everybody up again. Love this part. Alright, I'm gonna need uh, uh, Jerry and Michelle, you guys can come down here. And uh, Rob and Adam are gonna sit back there. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna play a little game called Try That On For Size. And how this works is uh, these two are gonna start doing a repeatable motion like that. Uh, Rolling out dough, and they can be like, I'm rolling out dough, try that out for size! And the other person can be like, I'm punching two people in the face at the same time, try that out for size! And one of them's gonna be like, I'm riding a cloud! <laughs> awesome. You can't ride a cloud. Um, and when they do that, you guys are gonna make the game show buzzer noise, which goes like, Aah! Good buzzer. I wish you guys would remember my buzzer all the time. Um, in any case, so what's a repeatable motion that you do almost every day? Stapling paper. Stapling paper. Whatever you guys are ready, stapling paper, you're a fabulous craftsman. I'm stapling paper. Try that on for size. I'm smushing a pizza. Try that on for size. <laughs> I'm trying to stuff little kids in the ground. Try that on for size. <laughs> I'm smushing a big giant bug. Try that on for size. I'm stamping out graffiti. Try that on for size. I'm working out. Try that on for size! I'm making out pizza dough! Try that on for size! Yeah. Um, Alright, what's, uh, what's something else you do maybe with like half, some half of your body? Top, bottom, side, other side? Hula hoop. Hula hoop! Hula hoop, whenever you want to start, Rob? I'm hula hooping, try that on for size! I'm getting a hip workout, try that on for size! <laughs> I'm getting attention from people by moving my, my legs around. Try that on for size. I'm in my dance moves. Try that on for size. I'm imitating what Debbie Terrio is doing on Dance Fever. Try that on for size. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. All right, uh, what is something uh, you do with your whole body besides that? Swim. Swimming, that's what I was thinking. All right, whenever you're ready, swimming. I'm swimming, try that on for size. I'm trying to get help. Try that on for size. I'm clawing the faces of the living. Try that on for size. I'm trying to get attention from my mom. Try that on for size. I'm also trying to eat some brains. Try that on for size. I'm trying to reach for number one. Try that on for size. I'm slapping 20 small children with tiny faces. I'm trying to get the zombies away from you. Try that on for size. I'm slapping away the zombies, but then getting infected and starting to think about eating the brains. Try that on. <laughs> Too many zombies. Too many zombies. All right, we'll do it one more time. Here, step on up. Uh, so what's uh, something repeatable that's really tough? Ballet. Ballet is tough. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, unless you're into that sort of thing. So ballet, whenever you're ready. Go I'm doing ballet. Try that on for size. I'm about to give the Karate Kid kick it in the movie. Try that on for size. I'm trying to slide down a chimney. Try that on for size. 
I'm an elegant fireman going down the pole. Try that out. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting beat up in a wrestling match. Try that on for size. I'm a pogo stick. Try that on for size. I'm a number four. Try that on for size. Rob zombie points. <laughs> Those are the points that come back and haunt you when you're dead. Um, all right. If I can get a, a one chair facing that way, three chairs facing this way, I'm gonna do a little thing. Uh, before, like MTV had next in all the bachelor and bachelorette shows, there was only one dating game. It was very original and uh, easily named the dating game. So we're gonna play a little dating game for you here, right here, and set some people up on a nice date. Uh, all right, so uh, what's, uh, what's uh, the nice occupation for our first bachelor tonight? Jennifer. Taxidermist. I heard uh, taxidermist. Our first bachelor is a taxidermist. Uh, there he is. Beautiful. All right, and uh, for our second bachelor, uh, what, is, what does he do for a living? Flower arranger. A flower arranger. That's so sweet. All right. And uh, for our final bachelor... Uh, Homicide detective! <laughs> 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 and uh, for our lovely bachelorette, uh, what does she uh, do for a living? Clown. She's a clown. <laughs> All right. And whenever you are ready, bachelorette, take it away. You are glad to be surprised. Hello, everyone. I'm so excited that you're here. Tell me about the most fun that you would do with me on your date? Well, I would take you down to my taxidermist shop and I'd show you a little bit of the bunnies and the, the squiggly ribbles and I'd stuff them over a nice boy. Bachelor number two. Well, I would gently open your petals. <laughs> I take you to a crowded restaurant. We sit in the back. We're at a view of the opening of the restaurant. And I can see who is entering and exiting the restaurant. If there are any felons. Bachelor <laughs> <laughs> sure number two. If we were going to meet your parents, tell me, what would we talk about with them that would make me know like what kind of family you have? <laughs> well, both of my parents are morticians, so I guess we talk about death. <laughs> lots and lots of death. Bachelor number three. I would insist that you don't wear your clown makeup when you meet my mother and father. <laughs> They're proper people. <laughs> We'd probably talk about my sweater and then maybe move into some fucking boxes, perhaps. <laughs> that the keeper told him he's dead now, but we stuck him back up so he looks alive and he's ready to bring to you a flippable. I love bloodlies. Bachelor number three, if yes. you were going to propose to me, how would you ask? Well, I take a bright light and I shine in your face. <laughs> Tell me the truth, are you going to marry me? <laughs> Bachelor number one. What I would do is I would take the wedding ring and I would put it on the bunny. And then I would bring it over to you and I would say, it's the dead bunny, but I stopped it, you see. And I would go, would you like to marry me now? <laughs> Bachelor number two. I would cover your naked body with rose stems. With me to pull the thorns, thus trapping you, making you my prisoner of love, and I wouldn't let you up until you agreed to marry me. All right, that's all very sweet. I've made my decision. Oh, okay.
Maria would like to. Thank you very much. Alright, you know what they don't make a lot of things these days? Um, they don't make a lot of things. But you know what they don't make a lot of? Is good movies. Everything's a sequel, or uh, it's an offshoot of uh, Survivor somehow. I don't know how, but it works that way. Um, but what I have here is for the best pitch people in the world, and they're gonna chat and give us some new ideas for some new movies. And the way this game works is, uh, I'm gonna get a suggestion from you guys for something they don't make enough movies about. And they're gonna give me the title of a movie, and then like uh, IMDB or Netflix are gonna give us a synopsis of the, what that movie uh, entails. It could be like, when Harry met uh, a dog, and Sally met a cat, and then the cat and the dog made each other. Oh, it's beautiful. Um, but if we like it like that, I like that. We're gonna. I'm gonna turn to you guys, and I'm gonna go. Let's see it. So let's try that one more one time. Let's see it. These guys are just so good. Um, so what's something they don't make a lot of movies about these days? Flashlights. Appliances. <laughs> All right, appliances. My movie. 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 Plugged in for love. <laughs> it's the story of a robot who's searching for his Mrs. Wright. Yeah. Blending. <laughs> the psychopathic chef is out for revenge and getting the back of the death of his wife and family, and he haunts a house and puts the people in the blender. <laughs> <laughs> the whirlpool, where you can move and move and move. Magnet the living oven. <laughs> Ovens. That have been buried because they're they're out of service. <laughs> but now they're crawling out of the rain, running back, they find a warm. <laughs> wow, this graveyard sure looks okay. <laughs> Siblings. They're siblings. Might be sisters. I don't know. Um, 
Um, and uh, what, where are they that siblings hang out? The zoo. The zoo! Alright, so you guys are siblings at the zoo, and uh, support reverse, you are a platypus surprise. Johnny, look at the lion! It's funny! It's great. <laughs> Stupid lion. Reverse. <laughs> Stupid lion. It's great. <laughs> Johnny, look at this stupid lion. Oh, Johnny, look at this stupid lion. It's great. Johnny, look at this stupid lion. 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 It's great. That is stupid lion. Hey, uh, hey, 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 hey,